Welcome to another episode of Clarity TV and welcome to a new year. Um, today I'm so excited to have Dr. Anne Arvizu as an, a guest, our first guest of the year. Anne is a senior executive and organizational strategist in the biotech medical affairs community. She is the CEO and medical affairs advisor at RxER Communications, and she has a long time experience of working in the health space, but I know she's cooking something new for 2020. So welcome, Anne. Thank you so much for taking time. Thank you, Dolores. Thank you very much. I'm honored to be your first guest of 2020. I think it's yeah. going to be an amazing year for everybody, don't you? I, I really, I, I feel like the year, I mean, the last two weeks have felt like, I don't know, two months. It's been <laughs> so fast and furious. Um, so tell me about a project or an experience that kind of became a before and after for you, a moment where things kind of shifted or pivoted. Wow. Um, you know, I've been in business on my own since 2002 in some capacity and it's, you were, you were 12, right? <laughs> <laughs> I'm 50 this year. So, oh, yay. That's a good year. Yay. Yes. So I feel like this really is, um, I turned 50 in April last year and this year it's just something's been unleashed. Um, I feel that I'm walking into an after and the before started about 10 years ago when, and I know you must understand this as an entrepreneur because entrepreneurs are visionaries, real true entrepreneurs are visionaries. And it's when you get that download of an idea and you know that you have to pursue it and you pursue it and you get zealous and you do it to the best of your ability to the point when you're burning out because probably you worked in some capacity as some kind of leader where you received this idea. So I worked for many, many years in the pharmaceutical industry as a clinical scientist, a medical affairs person. And then it was like, boom, this download comes of starting my first company. I was in Puerto Rico. I was, I used to joke that it's like the, the strong Puerto Rican coffee, uh, sitting there looking at the ocean, 5.30 in the morning. And I got my very first download of creating RxCR Communications. And that, that communications company, which I still own and operate today, has gone through a lot of before and afters. Like it's morphed <laughs> over the years. And you have to you move and change and adapt as an entrepreneur with not just the signs of the times and not just what your clients want, but with what's guiding you inside. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And so the after part is that RxCR has created now a proprietary framework of information that where I go into the C-suite of major corporations. I mean, we've been in Pfizer, Merck, et cetera, et cetera. You can look on my website, anrvzu.com, and, and a lot of our clients are there. And big pharma, biotech, even tech, and now we're expanding out of, of just that world, client um, Leaders will come to me and it's the woman leader who's like the vice president. She's not at the C-suite a lot of the time. Sometimes the chief medical officer or a chief officer of operations will hire me, but they'll put me in charge to, you know, really come alongside and behind uh, one of these senior leaders that they're exhausted. They're the ones on the planes. I've been there, done that. So I feel for them. And and really, that's where the core centrics framework and model has come from. So making them the core in core centrics is centered, open, resilient, and energized so that they can dot, 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 do their job, be their best, and be a congruent person because they're the one that walks into that job every day. And that's really, as entrepreneurs, we need that too. Corepreneur is the person that you become in that process. Oh, I love that. So when I'm here, first of all, a couple of points that I want to, 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 to mark because it's very important. As entrepreneurs, we create and we show up and we yes. do. And the truth is that just like Windows has version one, two, three, a million, we improve with time with and we change with time. And a lot of entrepreneurs, and personally, I have suffered of this because I've always had this idea that I should show up with a product and it should be great and I should never improve it because that would mean that the first version wasn't good enough. Mm -hmm. 
That's and so I think true. there's like an anthem there that, and, I, and kind of an accepted permission that maybe women entrepreneurs, we have less capacity to allow ourselves to evolve and to mm -hmm. pivot because we, or this has been my experience, I don't want to think, have people feel like I, I'm not super clear and I'm not focused if I pivot. But what I'm hearing from you is like, Pivot is the name of the game. Like yes. you start a business, you ser serve a market, you solve a problem, and the problem, the market, and you change over time. Yes, and you need to be integrated with that problem. And the people that are the most successful on planet Earth are the ones that have pivoted the best. So yeah. I 100% agree with you. It's they've gone through the hard times because nobody is without trouble or trauma or struggle or strain or striving or, um, you know, the tests or the trials that come along with entrepreneurship. When you have a great idea, it will be tested. <laughs> and when you get on the other side of that test or on the other side of that fear of walking forward or changing something or just making your idea happen, um, what happens on that other side is complete and utter magic. Yes. And you just yes. trust it and you go with it and you get to and you get to create and then you actually get to see the fruit of your creation. So so as a mother, right? I, I haven't had babies from my body, but I have three <laughs> step babies in my life and they're all adults at this point. But we you know, you'll always call them the kids, even though they're yeah, the babies, yeah. <laughs> but but you create something. So mothers will get that that you create something, but it's not ready to go to college yet for a while. <laughs> yeah, exactly. And our business is the same way. Yeah. And so what I'm hearing is that after so many years of helping communicate um, pharma companies or health organizations communicate effectively specifically on rare diseases or kind of the outlier conditions um, and, and help them position as the problem solvers for that, I, I kind of feel like you're now helping the outlier executive woman yeah. um, who is maybe is in need of support of how does she communicate her value? How does she communicate her ideas? How does she mm -hmm. communicate her, her capacity to add value while having boundaries, while mm -hmm. creating an experience yes. that supports her life and the career that she has. It sounds like you're now not changing, but adding um, under your company yes. a whole solution yes. for those women um, that have so much to give in a very high paced, you know, high stakes market. And they just want to do it, but many of them, and you and I have talked about this because we actually met at Alex Brown's event last year. Um, many of them walk out. Hi, <laughs> Ali. Um, many of them walk out. Many of them stop um, because they can't sustain it. Yeah, no, it's so perceptive of you to say that because they are the woman walking in the doors of that company every day. And really, the corpreneur, there's two, there's two women, there's two kind of sets of women that gravitate into RXCR and into our walls. And that is that corporate leader who's so tired, exhausted, burned out that she doesn't know how to prove her value or worth or the value or worth of the department that she serves and has had to create. So as a former corporate leader, I've, I've been a global corporate leader. I've had teams in Japan, in Europe, in South America, you know, in, in all the four corners of the earth, and I've had to protect them. So as a middle level leader, you're protecting your team, but you're also supporting your boss up. So you're squished yes, you the are. and there's pressure. There's a yes. lot of pressure that you're just consumed with. And as much as you try to be the perfect polished, you know, executive in that organization, you're getting on a plane. I mean, I did another 93,000 miles last year because <laughs> that's just what I do. You know, executive super duper platinum plus American airlines or whatever. And platinum on your Marriott, you know how it is as an entrepreneur, <laughs> you're going and you're going where your clients are. So for me to be in, you know, big industry type clients, I go where they need to be. And I live in South Florida where I want to live. Yeah. <laughs> and, and that's great. But you know, it would be it would be gainful for them to be 
to be where are you are you with me right now right are you with me to to sit down with me in a room and talk about okay here's the business model i'm going to use this year and here's the slide deck i'll create for you but at the very bottom of it they're like do you know what and i feel like a grasshopper jumping from meeting to meeting yeah and and it's exhausting right and so it's chaotic it's exhausting there's a shifting sand that's happening in corporate america and around the world because a lot of these companies that americans work for are also global companies so i've yeah. worked with a lot of big global companies the past several companies i've worked with are french and or european or you know when i worked at glaxo smith klein it's a uk based company and i absolutely love having that giant globe vantage point but it's a big world to conquer out there and there's a lot of stress in it. So bringing it back down to that personal conversation that the, the corporate executive has to have, they usually tell me one of two things. Number one, I'm really exhausted. I need something for me. Mm -hmm. And they're not given that enough in the corporations. The second thing that they ask for is, how can I do what you do? <laughs> and that's like, how do we create the exit strategy? And I'm, yeah. I'm like, don't quit your day job yet. You know, you yeah, have to yeah, it's double. You have to be called. There's like a ten step process. Yeah. You have to be called to be a, a, an entrepreneur, and then you but, become a corpreneur. But so that, so let's go to the next question because I think it's right aligned with what you're saying. Is what is something that has been with you all along, and in some ways, conscious or unconsciously, it has driven you from being the global leader to figuring out somehow you did it, your own exit strategy uh, and saying, I have the courage, I'll be fine. Um, I have the courage to go on my own and, and do this thing, trusting that you would be okay, but not necessarily knowing. Um, <laughs> and, here, and here you are saying, you know what? I'm 50. It's time for me to go back to my core entrepreneurship and get real of what do I care about? What is really important to me? And yes, of course, the client and the work that you are doing is important to you, but you are tuned into another problem that maybe you weren't tuned in or wasn't that relevant. And I think it wasn't that relevant 10, 20 years ago. Right. But now it's like, you hear it everywhere. It's like, I, I love what I do. I love making this much money as a top executive, yeah. but I want a life too. And right. how do I do that? So what, what's been that thing that's always been with you? Oh, Dolores, that is um, a million dollar question. I was going to say. Because, <laughs> right? This is, this is real value for our listeners on Clarity TV today because, because what is it that you tap into at your core? What is the C-O-R-E in core? What keeps you centered, open, resilient, and energized? And <laughs> I'm about to have a visitor, I think, come through. Oh, here. yay! <laughs> Mine is too big. It's a yellow Hi. lab that is sleeping over there. Hey! That's Dave. That's Dave. Hi, Dave. <laughs> well, I'm sure Dave is one of the ones that keep you in your core. Dave is definitely somebody that keeps me in my core. I'm so sorry. That is so funny. That's I actually didn't know he was there. He sleeps on my printer all day long. <laughs> <laughs> it's like he's a, he's just a fixture. I didn't even notice. That's hilarious. But, but um, here's but but here's what Dave is bringing for you. You know, yeah. I can. I mean, I'm a coach. I can read right now. Spontaneity is one thing that has kept you at your core. Um, and I can probably guess that curiosity has also been something that you've tapped into. That you you get a hint of something and you want to learn more and you want to get to the bottom of it, right? Yeah. And those, what you're touching on is core values, right? Yeah. So at the center of being centered, open, resilient, and energized, what is that thing that centers you? What is that thing, that person, that entity? Is it God? Right? So for me, it is my faith. And knowing that if, if you have a faith, if you have a, a core set of beliefs, you can tap back into those core set of beliefs and it keeps you strong from the inside out. So no matter what is going on out here, right? Because we have body, mind, spirit, individuals. So the mind is where the problems are. The mind is where you can, you can talk yourself in and out of stuff all day long, right? You can, oh, I should do this. I shouldn't do this you know what, you just sometimes want to shut up that, that nagging voice that, that like kind of is holding you back. 
Mm-hmm. And just go for something. And I think that the when when you have that strong core value at the very center, and you have faith that it doesn't matter the 2008 crisis. I mean, somebody's out there that's going to come and go. <laughs> it's going to come and go. Whatever is in front of you is going to come and go. It is. Um, we lost everything in 2008, and we and <coughs> it was restored a few years later, right? In different ways, and it's not necessarily in the way you think it will but if you have that faith that everything's going to come around that's why people get so scared in the stock market and if you've ever heard from some real like finance guys out there they say it is always going to go like this entrepreneurship mm-hmm. is no different it's the same mm-hmm. thing so riding out the bottom and being one of those women in the top one to two percent of women entrepreneurs that make it over seven figures that make it over the million dollar mark and stay there and know, you know what, it's, this is the climb. It's not, it's not a straight shot. If you make a little bit less this year, it's going to be okay, but you keep going and that next year is going to be a moonshot and you don't even know it's right around the corner. So exactly. You know, exactly. And, and, and you've talked about this and we, we touched on this early on in our conversation, you know, the, the, the mountain or the struggle or the challenge and yeah. that at the other through the storm, not around, mm. through the storm, you will mm. see the sun. Yes. Yeah. But around it, you'll always, you might miss the pain, but you'll never get to the magic. Right. You, you keep, da- you keep dance. You will keep dancing in the cycle of maybe you feel a little better, but you don't get to the deep root of fulfillment. Oh my gosh. Yes. Yeah, absolutely right through the storm and in the storm sometimes there's that little glimmer of hope there's a rainbow even if the storm is still going on and you know i live in florida so we get hurricanes yeah (laughs) but there's an eye and there's like a little glimmer of hope and there's a little break there's always a break there's always a a sign and i think that entrepreneurs especially women are more intuitive we're able to look for those signs. Yes. We're able to stop and listen. So really getting quiet on a daily basis and really allowing yourself to be led and not just, I know all the answers. We are imperfect. Everybody is. But we can really make a big dent on our little universe that we live in, in our lifetime and leave a legacy if we choose to. Yeah, I love that. I love that. So Let's go very specific. 2020, this kind of new shift focus, what does it actually look like? Let's pretend that it's December 2020 and you had an amazing year. What are you celebrating in your work? Oh, gosh. Um, celebrating the completion of the manuscript of the book I'm working on. As you know, it's been, it's, we're at around 30,000 words um, and having the right publisher and getting that done in a professional manner. So I'm letting, I, you know, I mentioned God before I'm, I'm really letting that, I'm letting that go. I know like a certain publisher I would like, but there might be a better one. Yeah. And I need to let that go. And I think that's a, a lesson for all entrepreneurs as well. Sometimes we want to fit our, what it looks like at the end of the year in a box. And it could be bigger if we let it go and let things happen. Yeah. So yesterday I was contacted by um, a television station who wants me to make an appearance and maybe do um, an appearance on their, you know, like fly up to Atlanta, go to the studios, et cetera. So I think uh, hopefully, you know, we'll get that. that at the end we were celebrating that. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Celebrating um, the relaunch of, I used to have a uh, coach training program out years ago called the CCI coach Institute. And there's a whole repurposing rebrand of that material right now going on because we don't live in that same world anymore in 2014. We are in really a new era of AI, of too much, too fast all the time, of moving technology, of, you know, we're, computers are about to be smarter than us. Yes. And we have to have that way. So we've created Corpreneur Academy and we've also, a couple of years ago, we launched our, um, I'm looking over at my vision board, so to make sure I don't forget. That was great. (laughs) (laughs) We we launched our um, From the Core Live retreat. And so having maybe a second date for that set as well, that was really amazing. And uh, yeah, and seeing what... 2.0 2.0 looks like to your earlier yeah. point. <laughs> yeah, exactly. exactly. It's creating along the way. 
<laughs> that's amazing. And maybe at TEDx as well with the whole launch of yes. your book. Yes. Um, so we are building the Clarity TV library. Oh, and cool. your book is not ready. So what what is a what is one book that that I know you have a lot of books right behind you, but what oh, is one book that you say, you know, this is one we should all read? Oh gosh. Now I haven't you know, listen to a lot of your previous episodes. I kind of touched on a couple, but uh, Paulo, let, 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 let God guide you. Put your yeah. hand on the right book. Yeah, uh, Paulo Coelho, The Alchemist. Great. It is um, such an inspiring book for anyone that really feels like they're walking out their destiny. And I'm sorry I, for the bright light that's, you know, kind of on my face. No, no, we never are sorry for the light. Yes. Oh, that's <laughs> <true>. <laughs> um, thank you, because I, I read it years ago, and this is a sign to me that uh, I should pick it up again. I have it upstairs. Um, and, and speaking of, you, you, you mentioned signs, and, and yes, we are on Clarity TV, and people wonder sometimes, so how do I get Clarity? And they, they, they work so, they work themselves up so much in like, oh, yeah in the frantic look for clarity. And the truth is that you and I know that clarity is within mm -hmm. and that clarity is when you're in tune with the little tiny, tiny things in your life. Like you, I mean, if you're listening to this podcast, to this clarity TV episode and this book called you, please do not ignore that sign. Yes. Uh, if, if, if when we, if when Anne said Paul Cole, something just hit, that is a sign, go get the book. Mm -hmm. Because that's really, getting the sign and acting on it is mm -hmm. actually the formula for clarity. It is, it's the formula for clarity and success. Because yes. the ideas are a dime a dozen. And if you are a receptive person, you're the type that gets the ideas. Someone gave me an amazing idea a couple years ago. And this is a friend of mine, she's sitting there at lunch with me and she's telling me about the cereal bar that she wanted to create. And I said, do it, right? And she wanted to do it near a college campus. And she even thought, I wanna move across the country. I can see it happening in California. Well, just about two years later, it was probably maybe the same, t same time that we were in uh, Scottsdale. Um, I was in Scottsdale and in the mall across the street from the county oh, right there. I was just gonna say, bar. But, but that's not your friend. No, because I didn't. I was just gonna say that because I, I, I saw it. I had never seen one. I know, and the point is, the idea came down. The idea was a time. It was an idea for a time such as this, and one person got it, and the other person got it, and one person acted on it. Yes, the difference between success and failure. Yes, and I am trying to find a book. Let me just see if I can. We can find it here. Um. And I know we're getting way out of script, but we don't really have a script, do we? That's okay. But there's a book that all of my clients actually know this book because I gift all my clients this book. Um, and it's called, What Do You Do With an Idea? Ooh. Write it down because you're going to love it. It's a I children's, know. actually, I'll, I'll, I'll send you a gift. Don't worry, I'll send it to you as a Oh, thank you. Um, <laughs> um, what Do You Do With an Idea? It's a children's book. Aww. It's a Japanese author, beautiful illustration, and basically it says what you just said. Basically, ideas are gifts that we all receive, mm -hmm. and most of us get a lot of ideas all the time, and, and, and the truth is that many times we ignore these ideas, like your friend. She had the idea. I don't think she had the energy, the courage, the whatever to pursue it. But sometimes, you, you've experienced this, I've experienced this, we have ideas that haunt us. Right. That don't let go, like every time we think about the idea, we feel happy, but we shy away. It's too big, it's too scary. Who right. am I to pursue that? Mm -hmm. And the book, I'm telling you the end of the book, but it's, it's, it's fascinating, is that what do you do with an idea? Well, you listen to it, you nurture it, you share it with the world, you give it some energy, and eventually the, the world moves to support you in the, in the racing of that idea. Yes. And eventually the idea grows wings, mm -hmm. 
-hmm. and it becomes bigger than just you and it flies out to change the world that's yeah. actually what the book uh, is so true it is so it is 100 percent universal truth because once you start on your path then then others come to you and the it path is revealed to you the path is completely and, and it, it takes trust patience. yes it takes trust and persistence and patience and and, faith and being in your core yeah yeah and it takes being in your core um so that you are in your truth yeah yeah absolutely mm -hmm. so i'll send you that gift because you're gonna love it um so and where can people find you oh well you can go to my website anrvizu.com and uh you know you can go to anrvizu.com forward slash retreat to look at the retreat and sign up or just find out when the next dates are um just go in there and put your email in and say that you saw me here and i'll give you a discount on whatever you uh whatever you sign up for and, and you'll hear, you know, hear more. Um, we have the Corpreneur podcast coming out. It should be out either at the end of January or early in February. So Dolores, you know, I'm, I'm, here's your official, you've already <laughs> been invited, but here's your official invite. So you'll awesome. be on my show. That'll be great awesome. because you are truly one of my corpreneurs, <laughs> um, someone that really lives from their core and from passion and has that idea that won't let go. Mm -hmm. So I love that. And um, you, you model and practice what you, pre what, what you preach. So thank you. And if you happen to be someone who's from the biotech world, you can find me at rxcrcommunications.com. Awesome. Awesome. And all of that information is going to be under this um, recording. So don't, don't stress if you don't capture that. So thank you, Anne. Any parting words? Oh, no. Just, you know, if you're a woman out there, um, what we shared today was was powerful and important. If you're a woman out there that's an entrepreneur that really wants to build a business because you have an idea, don't let it go. And don't be, I don't have this money or I don't have this time. None of it matters. If you think about how to do it, you will fail. If you think about why you're going to do it, you'll win. So just yeah. stick with your why, let that be in your core and let your highest truth guide you. I love that. And actually with that, if you allow me, I want to read what's behind me, which is the manifesto for my company, because it's right a lot around what you just said. Okay. I call my clients and the people I work with ideapreneurs. Because oh, I love it. I didn't know that. Yeah. And so the ideapreneur manifesto is we are creative, compassionate, and lovers of life. We have ideas all day, big and small. We do not hoard them. We take action on the ideas. We are called to serve, and we're generous in releasing the rest of the ideas out into the world. We're focused, determined, clear, and driven to serve the, our idea, the one we commit to, and the one we leave as a legacy. We are relentless in the pursuit of the support, network, spark and love for our idea to take flight we are the wind behind the wings of change mm. we believe we are with all our hearts our soul and our mind that the ultimate goal is positive impact we believe in the creative process of turning our idea into a product service or program for positive in the world we embrace the right are willing to play big even when we feel small we are scared to speak up, but we grab the microphone anyway. <laughs> we, are, we are grateful for the challenge and wake up daily to the opportunity. We wake up expecting the miracle, the sign, the magic that shows up in our life simply because we have said yes to our idea. Oh, so. I can't think of a better way to end. And I guess I'm one of your ideapreneurs too, because I agree with every word. That is beautiful, Dolores. Awesome. Thank you awesome. so much for having me today. You're very welcome. And thank you for the time.